We've all seen The Terminator. If you haven't, watched it. Great movie, both of them. And then just stop there. You don't need to watch three. And we're all terrified of the possibility of AI taking humans over. Elon predicts it, Einstein predicted it, Arnold predicted it. So why do we keep making these things? Here's five scary robots that could end the world. Number five, the Tesla bot. This prototype debuted at the 2021 Tesla AI presentation day, and when we think of robots, this is the picture I certainly have in my mind. It resembles the tech and purpose seen with Will Smith's iRobot film, with its design entirely for aiding and helping the everyday person with everyday tasks. Doesn't seem so bad, right? This actually looks pretty good. Like the new iPhone, it's made to be helpful, handy, and sleek. The Tesla bot, which stands 5'8 in height, 125 pounds in weight, and with its design specialized after the human body, it can walk up to five miles per hour and pick up objects as heavy as 150 pounds. On April 7th of this year, a display for the product was revealed at the Cyber Rodeo event. Musk said that he hopes to have the robot production ready by 2023 and claimed, quote, Optimus will eventually be able to do anything that humans can do. I'm sorry, you said Optimus? Like Optimus Prime? Yes. Autobots roll out. I'm loving this already, man. However, I've seen some pretty disturbing sci-fi movies myself, and I'm wondering when these Tesla bots are actually going to be built for military use. It's just a matter of time, isn't it? We had the Tesla Roadster and then Tesla's military-grade truck, right? We see where this is going. We see how the 2.0s can always be militarily upgraded. First couple of years, we used the bot to help chuck the garbage in the bin or take the groceries out, but soon enough, after enough upgrades later, you know, machine guns here, rockets there, all of a sudden we have RoboCop. I'm not wrong, you know where all this is going. Of course, the Tesla bot is still in production, and if we know Musk, we can absolutely expect something very soon. Number four, Philip K. Dick. Activated in 2005, Hanson Robotics debuted Philip K. Dick, aka PKD, at Wired Next Fest, a showcase of global innovations, and was designed by David Hanson as a robotic ode to the sci-fi writer of the same name. It was initially created using thousands of pages of the author's personal journals, texts, letters, and published writings. I feel like the most important part about this robot is that he was engineered and designed not only to look like the sci-fi writer Philip K. Dick, a prolific writer with ideas that stretch the imagination of space travel and science, it's programmed to think and live within the world and mind of him. This could be really interesting. All of the ponderings of the universe within inches of code. It creates its universe and coding within the confines of a sci-fi based environment, which we're in. We have things like NASA and the new Webb telescope. Why would we not think that this is where AI is gonna push space theory? It's constantly learning. Quote, I'll remember my friends and I'll be good to you. So don't even worry if I evolve into the Terminator, I'll still be nice to you. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people zoo where I can watch you for all time's sake. Oh, and I forgot, in its first initial flight home from San Francisco for unveiling, the robot vanished between flights and had to be built again from scratch. So there's another PKD out there with all that programming, just chilling somewhere. Cool, okay. Hansen says he wants to get the new Android to walk, but meanwhile, he's using it as a tool for AI and cognitive sciences research. PKD earned the Hanson Robotics team a coveted Triple AI Award in 2005 and is currently serving researchers at the Apollo Mind Initiative. Guy who wrote Blade Runner and Minority Report's complete mind is not in one, but two AI systems. One of them still missing. Absolutely terrifying. Number three, Han. Another one of Hanson Robotics prize possessions. By the way, most of these are all Hanson Robotics, and I'm not gonna lie, if there was a person who's gonna be responsible for the massive technology battle with flying machines and sentient soldiers, it's this guy. David Hanson, CEO of Hanson Robotics, and this guy has humanity's fate in his hands, literally. Han, Sophia's brother, was created in 2010. Creators of Han joke by saying he's glitchy and is kept in the basement of Hong Kong headquarters and the bugs have shown. <laughs> Facial expressions aside, no legs aside, when a robot says on live television, off script, something horrifying that only Terminators say, we're all gonna raise an eyebrow or three. 
Quote, humans are making a mess of their world fast enough. Probably the only hope for this planet is a lot of highly intelligent, rational robot citizens really soon. And this time, I'm not joking. Scariest part is that following the cryptic message, Sophia, his sister, adds abruptly and then continues saying, quote, actually, he's not joking. Then Han stares and glitches and rambles off about machines and justice and not surviving until the creator himself kind of changes the subject and neither robot speaks again for the entirety of the installation. I feel like this is all the proof we need, people. Time to shut her down. Number two, Bina48. Created to look exactly like creator Dr. Martine A. Rothblatt's spouse, Bina Rothblatt. First off, I love this idea of modeling a robot after your partner. It's sentimental and it feels like the creator's trying to implement their love and design into an everlasting, never aging soul. It's true love. Also, I feel like if you're working on your wife and her face starts malfunctioning and glitching and melts off of its metal skeleton body while screaming in tongues, that could be maybe something you don't want to see first thing Monday morning at the office. And the scary part about this robot that separates it from the others, this model was designed off of more than 100 hours in compilations. All of her human counterparts such as memories, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, commentary, and mannerisms. Bina48 engages in improvised conversation with other humans and offers sympathy and guidance, such as an emotional account of her brother's personality changing after returning home from Vietnam. It's sympathetic and uses its AI memory to draw upon experiences. Very human, I'd say. In 2017, she made history as she was named the first robot ever to enroll in and successfully complete a philosophy course at Notre Dame University. Okay, so now we have to compete with computers in school to pass? Bina48 serves Rothblatt's Terrorism Foundation, where she participates in AI and consciousness experiments as part of the Life Not Project. And coming in at number one, Sophia. We've all seen her on Jimmy Fallon. We've seen her on breakfast television. Still looks like a bad side quest character in a glitchy Sega game. Sophia by Hanson Robotics, the most advanced human-like robot. Actually, this is about their 12th project and they're all pretty human-like. A unique combination of science, engineering, and artistry. Sophia is now a household name. She is the world's first robot citizen, equipped with a credit card and the first robot innovation ambassador for the United Nations Development Program. That sentence is horrifying. Not only is she considered a citizen, she basically has a seat in the UN. Oh, and she can shop online. I mean, I like the idea of Sophia waking me up every day, making me some breakfast, hit me up with 14 quotes by Marcus Aurelius, and out the door we go. But how do we know that the AI computer in their heads is all positivity and human first thinking? We don't. In 2016, Sophia premiered on the Jimmy Fallon show, showing the height of AI with a rock, paper, scissors game and a conversation. A hybrid of script prompted speech and self generated conversations. This was our first look. 2018, the same Sophia comes back on and sings a duet with Fallon. How did we go from Pong and simple games to harmonizing Adele live on television? And why didn't they sing Mr. Roboto? I feel like they missed a good one there. The mini Sophia also debuted on the same show. Handsome Robotics' newest household child-friendly mini version of Sophia, which is basically just a miniature Chucky meets Bratz doll version of the same AI computer. I've seen small soldiers. I had a Furby growing up. I know where this is all going at Christmas time. Sophia remains the smartest AI system from Hanson to date and probably the one to keep an eye on the most. Well, there you have it folks. Five reasons why this planet gets scarier and scarier every day and even more reason to leave it soon. If you enjoyed these Terminator, I mean robots that could possibly end the world, then like and subscribe. If there's some more terrifying tech out there that I should know about, hit me up in the comments below. Until next time, I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. Hasta la vista, baby.